Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at something a lot of you were asking about. That is the Dell Inspiron 7000 gaming laptop for 2017. This is uh, $799 as configured. It's got a GTX 1050 GPU, a new KB Lake i5 processor, quad core, eight gigs of RAM, and a terabyte hard drive. And we'll be going through all the things that it can and can't do here in this review in a few minutes. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. One thing to note about these laptops is that they're all about packing in as much performance as possible for the lowest price, which means that you are not going to get something thin and light and attractive, but uh, rather something large and bulky that uh, delivers a lot of performance for $800, which I think is a pretty good deal if you're looking for that. Uh, so you've got about uh, 5.76 pounds of weight on this thing. Uh, it's 2.62 kilograms, so a lot heavier than many other laptops out there that cost more, but again, you're getting the performance here. So uh, like I mentioned, this has that i5 quad-core processor. It's a 7300. HQ. It's got 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It can be upgraded to 32 gigabytes of RAM. GTX 1050 built in with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM on that video card separately from the main RAM. So you have a good amount of performance here, entry level performance, but uh, much better than what you would get on a laptop lacking a discrete GPU like this one does. The battery on it is go probably going to be good for about five or six hours of non-gaming usage. I would say probably two or three tops if you are gaming on it. Uh, whenever you start running games that hit that GPU, there's a lot of power draining out of that battery very quickly. So I I would say that uh, go on the battery when you're just doing some work and other boring stuff and then uh, plug it in when you want to play some games. Now this one as equipped has a one terabyte hybrid drive and what that means is that it has a, a slower spinning hard drive to give you all that capacity but on that drive is a, a solid state component that will speed up certain things like loading the OS here for example or something like that. The drive manages uh, what you access most to try to figure out what it should put on that flash storage area. It will not be as fast as a true SSD but it will be faster than a traditional spinning hard drive but there are some ways to upgrade this this, and actually you can upgrade it uh, quite easily. Uh, there's a single screw here to pop open the bottom panel. I did that on my extras channel so you can get a feel for what's inside. Uh, you can swap out that hard drive. You can put in an M2 SATA drive for even better hard drive performance. So you have uh, two storage options. And then you can bring the RAM up uh, to 32 gigabytes of total memory, which is pretty good. So you do have a good amount of upgradeability, but you can't do the processor or the GPU. So you have to decide exactly what your base configuration is before you get into it and then you can start playing around with the RAM and storage later. Now the biggest gripe I have on this thing is the display. It's a 15.6 inch 1080p display but uh, what they've done is they've reduced the quality of the display from uh, this model from last year. So this is a new one. Uh, there was one last year that we reviewed that had a great IPS display. Uh, this one is what they call a TN display which means that as you change the angles uh, your image degrades very quickly. So if you're dead center on it it's not bad. Uh, nowhere near as good as last year's display, but once you go off center, you lose a lot of brightness and image clarity uh, because these displays really have a sweet spot where you need to be looking kind of dead center to get the best effect. And I found that with a lot of games that are darker in their environments, you uh, get a bit of a glow from the screen. It's not quite backlight bleed, but it really doesn't look all that great. And I think that's uh, its biggest downfall because last year's laptop, not only did your games look really nice with that really nice IPS display, but uh, you could also do things like photo editing and video editing because you had a display that was very well tuned for both activities. Uh, this one loses a lot of that versatility because it's really hard to edit photos on a display that uh, doesn't look all that great. And uh, this is where they really cut, not necessarily cut some corners, but they cut out some cost by uh, putting in a display that uh, lacks the clarity that we saw last year. So that's my biggest gripe on this one that I just can't get away from. When you're looking dead onto it, it's okay. But uh, like I said, last year's display was a lot better. And the keyboard and trackpad aren't bad. You're not going to get a mechanical keyboard with all the crazy lighting on it, but you will get a nice uh, red backlight glow, as you can see. Uh, they did outline the WASD keys, so they'll stand out a little bit differently, but the backlight is red and uh, consistent across the entire keyboard. They were also able to fit in a number pad, just given how much room you have on the device here. Trackpad isn't bad. I've seen worse. Um, uh, it's rather large, and it is pretty accurate, but I think if you are gaming, you'll want to get a gaming mouse that will give you uh, better accuracy. 
see. Uh, there are a bunch of USB ports on here. So you've got one USB 3 port on this side. You got two more USB 3 ports on the other side, but no type C or Thunderbolt. Remember, you're dealing with a low cost computer here. So things get uh, omitted from the hardware specifications. Uh, you have a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. So it's good for your dorm room. Uh, power goes in here. You've got a full size SD card slot on that side. On the other side, you've got uh, those two other USB ports, full size HDMI out for external displays. You get a gigabit ethernet jack over here and a combo headphone microphone jack for your gaming headset. Uh, on the back here, I call these the exhaust pipes. You've got uh, two uh, exhaust pipes for your uh, processor and GPU. This does stay very cool. We'll touch on the thermals a little later in the review here. So I was quite pleased with how well it could dissipate heat. It's got a little subwoofer on board. It's not gonna deliver a lot of boom, but you do get a pretty decent sound. And and again, having a larger case lets you have bigger speakers, so it does uh, sound decent, but uh, not as good as a nice pair of headphones might uh, plugged into your device on there. So overall, pretty decent casing. Again, not bad for the pricing, and my only real gripe here is the display. So let's take a look now at performance with the Cheetah on the screen here. Uh, we're going to first focus on some benchmarks, and then we'll load up a bunch of games and see how they play on it. So let's start off with the 3D Mark CloudGate test, and we got a score of 14,940 on that compared to 12,398 last year. A pretty big jump in graphics performance on uh, both of those tests over uh, the 960M that was in the old device. And even the CPU is slightly faster because it is a, a new Intel CPU as well. Kind of neat to see what uh, the same money gets you a year later, even though you're taking a hit on the display. A pretty good performance boost from what we saw there. I also ran the Time Spy test which is a direct X12 test and we got a score there of 1818 and uh, that also does better than the 960M that we saw last year. I am including my uh, Dell XPS 15 in that test with that same 960M processor because I don't believe this test was available at the time that I owned the uh, prior Inspiron 7000 but this does give you an idea as to uh, how you'll do from one year to the next. So a good little bump in performance there that I think will make a difference in some of the games you might be playing. Also also of note is that this one for $800 is faster than uh, the new MacBook Pro that uh, comes in for considerably more. Also of importance is the uh, thermals on this. And one of the things that 3D Mark offers in their test suite is the ability to run a stress test where they run the same test about 20 times to see if uh, the heat gets to a point where the chips slow down in order to cool themselves off. And the good news is, is that this one passed that test. It did not have any significant slowdown after running that test over and over and over again. So you you should see a pretty consistent gaming performance as you're playing on it. So without further ado, let's take a look now and play some games on it. I've got a bunch lined up. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to kick things off with Grand Theft Auto 5. On all these games, I'm going to have a real-time frame rate counter in the upper left-hand corner of your screen so you can see what we're getting. I do want to show you the uh, settings I have the game set to. And of course, you can turn these things down to get better performance. But I had the GeForce experience just give me the automatic settings, the recommended settings that uh, it has for this graphics processor. So I know a lot of you will see things that uh, you think I can change to make it run faster. And you're right. But again, I wanted to go off of what uh, standard consumer experience will be when they buy this thing. So there's all the settings. Uh, you can see right now we're getting about 45 frames per second in this scene. I've seen other scenes in the game go as high as 60 or 70 frames per second and it really depends on uh, what's happening on screen because this is a game that really depends on both the CPU as well as the GPU and there's lots of examples online as to uh, maybe why you might want to look at an i7 processor sometimes because they can handle some of the uh, CPU components of this game a little better. But again if you adjust the settings turn some things down, uh, reduce the image quality. You can probably get a consistent, a consistent uh, 60 frames per second, but uh, generally I'm seeing about 45 or so uh, with the settings that you saw there. So let's take a look now at Rocket League. All right, so here we are in Rocket League. You can see all the settings that I have turned up on here. I pretty much have it going full blast with everything at high quality. So let's see how it handles this game. This game tends to run a little faster than GTA 5 does, a little less demanding on uh, perhaps the CPU. And here you can see we're getting about uh, 96 to 100 frames per second or more uh, as we're playing through here. So no issues getting a consistent 60 frames per second on this game, a uh, really fast game, and uh, you'll have a very good experience playing this one on the laptop. There's more to see though. Let's take a look now at Doom. All right, here we are in the Doom settings. Again, I am doing this based on the recommendations from the GeForce experience because I am trying to replicate uh, what a consumer who buys this will experience. So these are all the settings it has set everything to. 
Again, you might be able to get better performance or worse uh, with your own adjustments here, but this gives you a good idea of an out-of-the-box experience. And uh, we're getting about 67 to 70 frames per second on here as I'm uh, playing through. So this is a very fast game to begin with and uh, really performs quite nicely on uh, this laptop. And I've seen it perform pretty nicely on some of the other uh, lower powered chips as well. So good stuff here. Uh, you can get a feel for uh, how much fun you can have playing Doom on your laptop and uh, not spending all that much money to be able to do that. So really good stuff. And uh, this game surprisingly is so is much better than I expected it to be when it was announced. I was a fan of the original Doom, which came out when I was in high school. I had to download it from a BBS and pay a long distance phone charge to get it. And uh, this one really lives up to that spirit. So a lot of fun and it really performs pretty well on here. All right, one last game to check out here and that is Street Fighter V. And what I did is I, I really just maxed out all the image settings at 1080p here. And uh, as you can see, we're getting 60 frames per second consistently here. So it's actually running really nicely. So again, it gives you a good idea of the kinds of games you can play on here and uh, the kind of performance you can expect. And as you uh, turn some of the image settings down and some of those other games we looked at, uh, you could probably get a better performance out of it. But overall, I'm very impressed with what you can get for $800 here. The 1050 really does uh, make a big difference over the 960M that was appearing in a lot of the laptops at this price point uh, from last year. So a good improvement in overall performance. Decent gaming here, as you can see. Uh, again, my only gripe is with the display. And you know what's funny is that if this display uh, was on last year's model, I probably wouldn't even be talking about it. But they really were able to get a really nice IPS display in last year's $800 laptop. Uh, that is not what we have in this year's. But uh, that is really my only gripe with it. You are going to get really decent performance out of it. I'm really actually pretty pleased with the sound quality, too. The speakers are here in the front. Uh, the subwoofer doesn't add a lot of boom to it, but it does give you decent stereo separation. And the size of this casing does give you uh, some decent audio out of it. So all in, if you're looking for a portable game machine and want to spend less than $1,000, uh, this will do it for you. Uh, you might be able to do better if you spend more money on something nicer, but if this is all you got to spend, I think you'll be pretty pleased with what you see here. Now, one of the things I would love to hear from you are some other examples of uh, current $800 laptops I should be taking a look at. Uh, leave me some suggestions down in the comments below, and we'll try to find a few more of these uh, throughout the course of the year. So that'll do it for for the Dell Inspiron 7000. If I didn't play the game you wanted me to play, I'm sorry, I only have so many, but uh, if I have a few minutes, I might be able to squeeze a few more in on the extras channel, so do let me know down in the comments below. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.